Hello and welcome. You are listening to the Gay With God podcast, a safe place for us to share our stories and support one another. How long did we know? What challenges did we face? Did we lose our faith? When did we find our way back home? Or are we still searching? The stories you hear on this podcast will melt your heart and strengthen your belief that in God, all things are possible, and you can be, authentically, gay with the God of your understanding. I am your host, Midge Noble, and I am very honored that you are here. Hello, everybody. This is Midge Noble, and I am very glad that you're here. I'm excited to bring you another episode of the Gay With God podcast, and I'm also excited to remind you that I will be at the Wild Goose Festival July 11th through the 14th. I'll be taking the show live once again with a really awesome guest that I met at the festival one year, and I'm so excited to bring her story and her heart and soul to the podcast. So how can you do that and how can you get a discount to go to this awesome festival, which is a transformational, community-grounded, in-faith inspired social justice event. It's a -a one-of-a-kind gathering that brings together activists, artists, and seekers from all walks of life to explore justice, art, spirituality, and community. So it takes place at the Van Hoy Farms in Union Grove, North Carolina. Again, it's July 11th through the 14th. And because you're a follower of the Gay With God podcast, I can offer you a special discount code. And you can find that on the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. On the show page, you'll find your discount code and you'll also find the link to the Wild Goose Festival so that you can check out all the speakers and all the things that will be going on and you can find where you can buy those discounted tickets. For those of you who are a follower of me and you're buying an adult ticket, you will get $50 off the price of that adult ticket. So there you have it. There are some restrictions. They're listed on the show page, but you can come and join me and I can't wait to see you there. Okay, so let's get started. So today I'm going to talk to you about the political environment that we find ourselves in, as well as how we can use the Beatitudes in the Bible to look at how we want to show up during this political event (laughs) that we're about to go through again. So as you all know, if you are linked in at all to any of your social media or the news, we are again in the same position where we will have two candidates. Some people do not like either one of them. Some people do not like at least one of them. And all of us, I think, are nervous. I think we're nervous for very many reasons. And for myself, I am just really nervous, of course, about how the marginalized communities, our LGBTQIA plus community in particular, will weather this storm once again. I am equally concerned about how our country is going to recover from the amount of hate and violence and just the climate of today in our world and the disrespect and the lack of being able to talk across tables or across aisles, feeling like we have to be less than who we really are. We can't agree with a candidate that's different from us without feeling like we're somehow going to be kicked out of a party. You know what that reminds me of? kind of reminds me of a gang, a gang mentality where we have to dress the same, look the same, do the same thing, believe the same thing, and we can't be an individual anymore because then we are somehow going against our beliefs as a party or as a community. Now, I am registered Democrat, and I'm proud to say that I am, and that doesn't change who I am as a person I'm a Democrat because of who I am as a person. I believe in a lot of the the things that Democrats believe. However, I have voted for Republicans before. I would not think twice about voting for someone who was better qualified and happened to be in a different party. And I don't think that makes me less of a Democrat. I think it makes me a human person. I think it makes me a person that can can look at a situation and think for myself. And I should have that right in America to think for myself. But as we've talked about, I also should have the right to have health care and 
make sure that I can say what I want to say about my own body and follow through with that without a government telling me I can't do that for my body. I just heard about a kid that in Texas that was in a lawsuit because the school wouldn't let him wear his hair the way he wanted to wear it. And I, I don't know. I've worked in school systems. I understand that some things are very distracting and we don't want to be too distracting. But the pictures I saw from this kid's hair was absolutely not a problem for me. And I don't think it would have been a problem for an instructor. But somehow in Texas, they ruled that he could not wear his hair that way. All of these things are frustrating. And the most frustrating for me right now, as far as where we're going and how we're going to get there, is what are we going to do as a community to look at whether or not we're going to have democracy or a dictatorship? And I'm going to put that out there as clearly as I can, that we have two very different candidates. We have one that is loud and large and, and always talking about himself how great he is, how wonderful he is, how he's bigger, better, smarter. Everything he does just is magically better and bigger and greater. And we have another candidate who seems to come across humble that has been in the business of politics for most of his life and understands how to negotiate, work together, and give other people praise for what they're doing. He is so quick to say to us, the American people, how, how resilient we are, how strong we are, how, how we have made America what it is today, and that we continue to show up and not give up instead of making things so polarized. So, of course, I have a favorite candidate, and of course, I know who I'm going to vote for, because this girl right here is not going to vote for somebody who, number one, doesn't want my rights to exist in America. I'm also not voting for a certain candidate because I don't want to be a part of the ugliness and the anger. I don't know if I've disclosed this to you before, but my whole Lenten journey this year is all about and I'm, it's probably Lent is probably not a whole year long for most people but it probably will be for me because I have such negativity toward the candidate who has ripped away rights and who has done illegal things in my opinion and I cannot support that level of hate and anger and yet I am called this Lent season to change my heart I can't worry about someone else's heart, but I need to change my heart. And so I am praying every day that my heart will connect to compassion and understanding and, and hopefully one day some sort of love for a candidate who is so, in my opinion, dangerous for our communities, especially the marginalized. We need to make sure that we are supporting a candidate who will be there for the gay community, for all marginalized people who are not getting the right health care, the housing that they need, their right to vote, that they are not being taken care of and they need to be taken care of. And why do I say that? I say that because I am identified as a Christian and I do read the Bible and in the Bible in Matthew the Sermon on the Mount happened and when he gave this sermon or this talk however you want to describe it he began to talk about certain people he began to talk about the poor in spirit those who mourn those who are meek those who are hungry and thirsty those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, those who are persecuted. And these are not things that God wants for us to be, but there is a specific thing that we get as a reward if we're going through these hard times. And it spells it out that if we are poor in spirit, we will inherit the kingdom of God. If we mourn, if we're sad and we're going through hard times, we will be comforted. If we are meek, we will inherit the earth. 
Now let me just say that I am not an expert in the Bible and I don't claim to be. However, I have been listening to an amazing podcast called The Bible Project, and on the show notes, I have listed a link to their podcast, and they did a whole series on the Beatitudes, and these guys are smart and creative and amazing, and if you have seen The Chosen in the theaters, they actually have a little promo about The Bible Project, and they have a cartoon caricature of sections of the Bible. So it's really it's really interesting and very cool. But the project itself, the Bible Project podcast itself is amazing and it will go into such depth about the Beatitudes. I'm almost finished with that series and I'm going to have to listen to it again. But for today's discussion, so I just wanted to say that to you, that there is a, a very good resource for you, the Bible Project podcast that can walk you through all of the Beatitudes. But for today's emphasis on this podcast, I wanted to bring out those thoughts about who do we need to be while we're voting this year? Who are we looking for as a candidate? Who are we looking for as a person that we know that Jesus emphasized these types of struggles or these types of personalities that we may have that really are cherished? and really are exactly the people that Jesus is saying will be rewarded, but we also have an opportunity to extend the greatest commandment to those people. And that commandment is to love them, to love them. If a candidate cannot generate compassion and love toward a marginalized community, then I don't trust them. And I don't trust that they have the best interest of all Americans in their mind. What are they going for? Is it for themselves? Is it so that they can have prestige and power? That's not something that really is what I would want to have is a single focused leader that only thinks about themselves and does not care about all of America. I also want someone in charge who cares about other countries because I know and you guys probably know that the word neighbor in love your neighbor, the greatest commandment, does not refer to my next door neighbor any less than it refers to my neighbor across the pond, my neighbor in a different country. So when I'm called to love, I'm called to love everybody. And that is why we have things like NATO, because we are called to be the people who can assist other people when in need. We're called to do that as far as the Good Samaritan story, that it doesn't matter how righteous you think you are. You're only righteous when you're really living the life that Jesus would have us live, that we are giving to other people. We are helping out other people. It is an action word. It's not a pious word. To be righteous means that we are helping someone else out. And in so doing that, we are walking the walk of Jesus because Jesus is compassionate and is open to all people and embraces all people. The Beatitudes clearly look to me like it's a guideline not only for comfort that if I'm finding myself in great despair you know hold on it's gonna get better look what's look what is gonna be happening for you so yeah I might suffer during this lifetime it's not gonna be a perfect thing all the time for a Christian or a non-Christian. Life happens and we experience a lot of things in our life that is very, very tragic. That doesn't mean that there isn't something better later. And it may even reveal itself in the here and now. There are miracles that still happen every single day. And there are things that we have to go through. But I think we're called to go through it in a way of strength and patience and love. Anytime I find myself in great despair, and I have had very dark nights of the soul, there was always something that pulled me through it. And sometimes it was in a person's words, or they showed up at a certain time. For me, that was a miracle. 
because if they hadn't in that exact moment, things might have turned out differently. And you guys, I'm sure all of you have a story, and please feel free to email me your stories of dark nights and the soul and let me support you through that. But what I'm saying is that we are not called to be the ruler of everybody, to have dominion over everybody. That's not our job. God's got that covered. And Jesus was not brought here to have dominion over others. Boy, didn't they think that he was going to be the, the king and he was going to be the one to wipe out you know, all of the negative people in the world. No, we are not here to wipe out all the negative people in the world. We are here to make sure that we speak up when someone is going off the rails and not competent to lead this country in the decorum that we're used to leading our country in. Now, do I want us to give in to all of the political brouhaha that's going on? No, I don't think Jesus gave in to brouhaha's either. I think that Jesus set people straight when they were going and using the temple in a disrespectful way because they were charging people more for their sacrifices than than they were supposed to. So Jesus set people straight. Jesus had tough words. Jesus didn't back down, but he also gave those things because of the purpose of what he was here for, to show us that there was a better way, that there was something waiting for us. So when we enter, you know, this political season that's going to be vastly ugly and vastly cruel to people, what are we called to do? How are we supposed to show up at the polls? And how are we supposed to go through this entire political year of nasty commercials and nasty comments and all of the memes that are coming up? I was really challenged this morning, you know, because there are times that, that I might like someone's post because it was a funny, humorous depiction of a candidate. <clears throat> and then I got a little bit um, talked to, I think, because <laughs> I, I began to realize that even if I don't post it, if I've liked it, then I'm saying, yes, I should discredit this this person. And I'm not wanting to discredit them. I don't want them to lead our country. However, I don't think that falls in the category of what I'm being instructed to be, and that is to love. And love doesn't make fun of people just to make fun of them. We may joke with each other sarcastically, and there's a difference between sarcastic humor and put-down humor. And, and I know the difference, and yet I sometimes go along with that. And so I'm, I'm saying that to you guys as a as a claim that I, I am not great at this. However, I choose to lean in to being better than I am at times. So the Beatitudes are a sweet kind of gentle way of talking about not only compassion for those who find themselves in this situation, but you can, you can be assured that you will have a good life and you are fortunate to not always be on top. Because when we're on top, I think we lose perspective. And it lends itself to thinking better of ourselves than we need to. And that's not that we can't feel good about ourselves and have great authentic power. And we, we can have that. But authentic power and feeling good about ourselves means that we feel good about all of ourselves. <laughs> when we don't do so right and we, need, we miss the mark and we need to turn around. And sometimes when you get too haughty and full of hubris, you really lose perspective of where you fit in the world. And we should be fitting side by side. And no matter what job you have, you are no better than anybody else. You may have a position where you are a leader, but there is a way to lead with compassion and no hubris. And there's a way to lead with a lot of hubris and very little compassion for those who have less than you or do not have as many skills as you may have. So we definitely want to keep the Beatitudes in place for us as we're going to the polls. And not just during this political year, but to contemplate on them and to learn from them as to how we show up in the world and how we show up for each other. When we recognize that someone is struggling, 
then what are we going to do? If you combine the, combine the Beatitudes with the Samaritan story, it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to walk by someone who is in distress. And if I can't give them money, because maybe I really don't have any either, then what can I do to offer something to them? Can I keep snacks in my car to hand out to someone who's saying they're hungry? It's not going to be a whole meal, but it's going to be something. Can I buy somebody's meal in some of these restaurants that say buy a meal for someone who may be homeless? And you can buy it. They'll put the ticket on the wall. They pull Somebody pulls it down that really needs a meal and doesn't have that money. And then they can have a good hot meal for the day. You know, there are so many things that we can do that that takes us into that connection to others and not just thinking of ourselves. The one thing that I really wanted to make sure that we talked about today was being really open-minded about how this affects our community because there are some people out there who may be gay and voted for this candidate before. There may be black people who voted for this candidate before and that goes back to a lot of stuff that we won't talk about today, but there are reasons why we side with people who hate us. You know, I don't know if it's like keep the enemy closer kind of thing, or if we're still wanting and craving to be loved by people. And so we choose people who don't have our best interest at heart because we don't want to believe that they don't have our best interest at heart. So be really, really proactive and careful as you're thinking about who you're going to align with because when you align with them you are saying that you are like them and I don't want to be like a candidate who will make fun of somebody who has cerebral palsy or make fun of someone who has a speech impediment or someone who has stuttered in his life I think that's cruel I think it's disrespectful I think it's beneath any of us to do those things and I will not stand beside someone who does that and I will not stand beside someone who believes that my life is less than and I don't deserve the same rights as everybody else. It's very clear in my head that even though no one's perfect and I know either candidate has good and bad things that are going on with them, for me morality and compassion and love will always be my guiding force. It may not sound like it's politically sound, but Jesus was very much like that. And Jesus is someone that I follow also, and I'm not ashamed to say that either. So I will not put my political power of my vote into making things worse for any other person. And do I like higher taxes to pay for some program that is going to benefit someone else? I don't like spending the extra money, but I'm grateful that if that's what it's going for, that I voted for that. I've been put on this earth to be the salt of the earth and to be a light into the world. And that's what the Beatitudes said as well, that you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything. So... I believe that my salt of the earth is what flavors this earth in justice and love and compassion. And if I turn my head away from someone who needs me and someone who needs compassion, then I have no longer had that essence of who I am. And you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel so we have to be the light we have to be the beacon of light that shows people that compassion and love can be a rebel act because we will not put another dictator into office this year I know that got really political and it's I can blame it on my friend who says so are you going to be political on your podcast this year <laughs> And here's the thing. <laughs> yes, I probably will. 
and I will also continue to share your stories. So if you have a story to share and you want the world to hear your coming out faith journey story and you want to promote your business or what you're doing on this podcast, after you share your story, I would love to post your links for everybody to see. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you for sharing and supporting this podcast. And remember to go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com to not only see the link to the Bible Project uh, podcast, but also to get your special code if you plan to come to the Wild Goose Festival. And I really can't wait to see you there. Make sure you show up at the tent when I'm doing my podcast, and I'd be glad to see you there and greet you. Check out our Facebook group, Gay With God, where we do a monthly Zoom group entitled My Faith Journey. And if you need support to help you through your coming out or faith journey, go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to see how you can connect with me. And your first session will be a complimentary session so we can get to know each other and just get a good feel for whether or not we will work well together. If you are listening to this podcast and are questioning whether you can be gay and be in relationship with the God of your understanding, if you identify as LGBTQIA+, or not even sure if you're gay, God has always been within you, even when you didn't know it. You have always been gay with God. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned to see how you can join the Gay With God community. And as always, you are loved. I want to invite you to become a part of the Gay With God community. How can you do that? Stay connected by messaging me your thoughts and comments in the comment section under the downloads of the show on the Gay With God show page. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen and share, share, share so we can increase our community outreach and be a light to those who are struggling to claim their faith. Consider being a sponsor so I can highlight your service in our community. We are all worthy of respect and a relationship with the God of our understanding. I want to thank you in advance for supporting this podcast. Together, we as a community will keep this show visible and our community stronger. Deep gratitude to my friend Tim McClendon of Tim McClendon Music for allowing me to use an excerpt from Interlude 4, a song found on his CD entitled Sundance.